Welcome to a very late October TBR tackle and also welcome to my channel. My name is Sarah Freshly and this is Freshly Read Books. So TBR Tackle is a year-long readathon that is done by Kieran from KD Books in which you choose 12 books at the beginning of the year and then each month you get a prompt that leads you to one of those books or a different book or you swap your stack or all these crazy things can happen. Typically what I do on my channel is I film my reaction to the prompt, choosing the book and then reviewing it. However, I don't have footage from that first part, the prompt reaction and choosing the book. Oops. So that's why I am here now uh, to kind of walk through that process. Although technically I didn't choose the book even in that first section because I like narrowed it down to a couple of books and then I put it on my Instagram and let my followers decide, which I do pretty often actually when I can't decide between like a couple of books to read. So follow me there if you want to have some input. So the prompt for October was to read a book that had been featured on, like written about or that's by an author that had been written about by Bob from The Bob Sphere on his blog. So I went on there and I looked for any of the books that I currently had on my TBR Tackle TBR, and none of those were on there. None of the authors that I had left were on there, which are, the, the books are In My Dreams I Hold a Knife, A Walk in the Woods, and Say Nothing. So none of those were on his blog. So then I went through and found some authors that were there that matched up with my larger TBR, and then I chose three books that I wanted to possibly read in the month of October, and I put those on my Instagram and had you all decide. So the first one was American Psycho by Brett Easton Ellis and then we had Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro and lastly uh, Home Fire by Camilla Shamsi. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I should really look that up. But yes, these were the three books that were options for this month and by overwhelming majority i would say the remains of the day one i think this was like over 50 percent and then american psycho had about 30 and then home fire had like somewhere in the teens so that meant that i of course read the remains of the day in october and now i will go ahead and flip to my actual footage that i have of me talking about my review of this book well i think this is my uh, favorite issue girl now i read this a while ago i just like haven't actually sat down to try to like accumulate my thoughts and my love for this book like it I went through a journey and you know so did our nice butler Stevens here so this is my third Ishiguro book my first was Clara and the Sun and then I read Never Let Me Go and now I've read the remains of the day. This one has to be my favorite, which is weird because for a large part of it, I liked it like, but I wasn't, I wasn't getting a lot out of it. It wasn't like doing a lot for me. And I was like, oh, well, like at least I'm having fun reading this book. Like at least I'm enjoying it. It's a good read, but like, I don't think I'll keep the book afterwards. Like, I don't know if I'll watch the movie. Side note, should I watch the movie? Please let me know. But then like something happened, it, like, at the halfway point and I started just like falling in love with the book so much so that looking back at the previous half of the book that I had read I had started really loving those moments even more and the further the book went on the more I felt like that for the previous part of the book like until by the time I got to the end I was like totally obsessed with it like this I <laughs> is this my most successful TBR tackle month it might be, and this was never even on my list. And now I'm just, I'm so happy that I read it. I, I could definitely see myself reading this again. I should talk about what it's about. Also, I really wanna get another like version of this. I don't like when they're the movie covers, and now that I feel like I'm gonna wanna keep this book and I want it to like live on my bookshelf, I, I feel like I want like a, a better cover of it. But anyways, The Remains of the Day follows Stevens, who is a butler and has been for a long time. He served mainly two people, the late Mr. Darlington, yeah, at Darlington Hall, and then he's currently serving a man that was uh, from the US, who basically encourages him to go on like a road trip, basically, or like to travel in some capacity. And he says like, you can use my car, like, you know, just take some time. I'm going to the US, like you take some time for you basically. And so the book is set during this road trip that Stevens is taking. And a lot of it is just reflections back on his time as a butler. This also takes place in post uh, World War II Britain. So we do have that like influence in the reflections back on his time, particularly with Darlington, who was his original boss who like you start to kind of learn what his impact was or the role that he played in World War II and you're only getting this through Stevens who doesn't have like a super clear picture himself 
but picks up things just slowly over time by serving this man and uh, the parties that he would have, the people that he would have over, the conversations that he would have, all these things. And at the same time, you're getting this feel for why Stevens holds his job to such a high caliber, or why he is so passionate almost, although passion is not a word I would ever like use to describe him. But what that portrays itself as is being very like stoic and having a lot of dignity. There's a lot of conversations around dignity as a butler and just serving this person to the best of your ability, keeping the house in order to the best of your ability and always meeting ev any struggle with grace, with dignity. Stevens's dad also was a butler, so he saw that growing up and he was able to work with his dad and he had that influence in his life. But it's also interesting, like the things that Stevens is trying to do, because now that he serves somebody new, uh, Mr. Faraday, who is the American that now lives in Darlington Hall, and he likes to joke around a little bit, and Stevens is not used to that. He's not used to like telling jokes or being sarcastic or anything of that sort. But he wants to try because he feels like now this is an added responsibility of him as a butler to this specific person. Like he's trying to be the best butler for a specific type of person. And so you get to see like how hard he tries and how much his job means to him. That like he feels like he should be able to mold himself to fit the person that he serves rather than there is like one way to be like a gentleman and that if that person's not like that then it doesn't matter like as a butler. But there's something about the way that Stevens looks at the world and the way like what he kind of discovers about himself and about others and about his dad even or uh, thinking back on his time with Mr. Darlington, thinking of his current time with Mr. Faraday all while on this road trip as well as with another a housekeeper that used to live and we used to be the housekeeper of Darlington Hall. The way he reflects on these things and the way that those reflections build off of each other is what contributed to me ending up like loving the book by the end of it and reflecting back earlier in the book when I wasn't really enjoying it all that much or it wasn't really having a profound impact on me but then like the things that I would read later would really change my thoughts on those earlier opinions. It was because the book evolved and Stevens evolved and his like reflections on reflections evolved. It's told in this very like beautiful subtle way that I'm I was obsessed with. So yeah what a win of a book. So I'm gonna need to know what other Ishiguro I should read now that I've read these three because I'm clearly gonna have to read even more by him. Anyways, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, please let me know by liking, subscribing, commenting, letting me know what you think of Remains of the Day. What's your favorite Ishiguro? What other Ishiguro should I read? Should I watch the movie? I have so many things you need to tell me. You don't need to tell me all of those things, just, just the ones you have opinions on. And besides that, I upload new videos every Wednesday, so I will see you then. <laughs> Bye.